DM me. We got in the DM. I was a little scared to work with him. I had everybody saying, "Man, don't work with Fredo." Why it dangerous or? It's it's very dangerous. Well, at the shit till today, it's it, everything is dangerous. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. So Fredo Bangs, how, how did that whole situation even come to be? You know, as far as you making that hit with him, man. Fredo, um, Fredo's just a good nigga. Like okay. he DM me, we got in the DM. I was a little scared to work with him. Big flight center, first night hit him. Yeah, I'ma feed a dick before I ever feed a dick. I had everybody saying, man, don't work with Fredo. Why it dangerous or? It's it's very dangerous. Well, at the shit. Till today, it's it, everything is dangerous. So, I'm not one of the niggas that's trying to be dangerous no more. I had my dangerous, you know. I, I sacrificed my life for this shit that I'm on Bro, right now. I'm telling you, I was <laughs> I was offered to go to a studio in in uh, California, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like and like people was trying to get me to come do an interview at the studio, and it, it wasn't a bad thing. It's just the reputation that it holds, and me yeah. being in another city. It's like I gotta know that it's you know everything. I could have called in some things and made it happen, but it yeah. was like I'm not gonna go through that tonight. Yeah. Nah, for real. You just gotta be careful how you move. Am I right? Like, nah, that's that's what it is. Like the thing is, when I actually got to Fredo, I realized that bro heart good. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's just you know you got certain instances of. Rumors. Every every artist got these rumors behind them. Not even rumors. All these niggas are staying over, nigga. Every, I ain't been around one pussy rapper. Right. That's why my <laughs> life is different. Like I be around niggas and be like, y'all niggas got it easy. Y'all work with who? I wish I could work with them. Yeah. Every nigga I work with then stood over a nigga, been to jail. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't. I, I know it because when you're around them, it's a different. It's a different right. energy. Right. You feel me? They even battling with they self. Mm -hmm. So when you around a nigga and you could tell like they don't they don't want to get in no more trouble. Yeah. But they willing to die today if you yeah, play, you know you, what I'm yeah, saying? Don't push my button, nigga, you gonna get it. Come on, man. So but as far as it being dangerous, this shit very dangerous. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But I don't give a f like when it come to me and my like I told you, when you love shit, you go that extra mile. Right. And yeah. I try to do it as safe as I can, but some of the shit I done done, I ain't gonna lie, it ain't always been safe. Let me ask you something, because you, you speak about the hits and the early hits and the the way that you've been able to really scale monet monetarily, mm -hmm. you know, um, how did you know how to conduct your business? Because I see so many young dudes come through here that really, they got in deals, bad situations to mm -hmm. where they weren't able to capitalize on the assets. Right. Uh, or, you know, I how, don't know how to, how, how to really, the business, the go. money part. Correct. How did you know that? How did you, how did you understand that so early on? Um, for me, I had a great lawyer named Leslie Cross. Got to have a great lawyer. How did you find him? Man, um, somebody turned me on to him. Okay. And I had a great, you know, this nigga probably never think I'd give him his flowers, but I got to give him today. Uh, me and my manager, my ex-manager, we, we separated. You okay. feel me? We separated like, I want to say two years ago, three years ago. But man, when I say this nigga unselfishly taught me the game. And I feel like when you my age or when you do what I do, you can't pay a nigga to be real. Because every nigga wants to be needed. And they feel like if, if you don't need them no more, then... Then, then they they useless. So I love when a nigga selfishly, unselfishly gives me the game. He gave me the game. It ain't like I didn't need him. You feel me? We just we hit a point where we both I don't know what made us go left, but it it was like a disagreement. But other than that, man, the nigga gave me the game. I stood on business. He stood on business. We made a lot of money. Every one of my managers. My ex-manager, my current manager, the manager before that, all of them got money. All of them got nice houses, subdivisions. You feel me? We broke bread. But when it come to these young niggas, you got to find you an old nigga that ain't, that ain't scared to, to understand that they meant to be in your life for five years. It might not be a lifetime. You feel me? Like, you can't take 20% from me forever. Yeah. And I'm just a nigga who... After I hit a certain point, I realized, like, I right, if it's certain things that 
my older manager don't want to do that I feel like is necessary for me because I'm also living a dangerous life. So if you get to telling me, hey, every beat you sell, I want this, I'm going to get that to you till I realize, hey, I done been to 20 sessions where all these niggas got sticks and I'm in that bitch by myself. I need some goddamn security. Can we take that out of your bread? Because if I keep taking it out of my bread, but I don't think, I think most young niggas never really understand it. So you got to watch what you sign. But all my deals with these managers be handshakes. I don't do, like, when it comes to that, I don't really do no more paperwork, even with labels now. All my deals with these labels, I've been, if y'all niggas don't want to shake on it, fuck it. Like, that's all we can do is shake because I'm done being buying to a contract. I'm too. I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.